Hi guys, um, namaste and greetings from India. I am Sohadia Day. I'm an Indian writer, columnist, a fellow of the Royal Asiatic Society of London and a podcaster. Um, I hail from Mednapu in West Bengal and I'm a columnist for the Sunday Guardian and a recipient of the Pradhan Mantri Rashtriya Bal Puraskar, which is the highest civilian award for Indian citizens under the age of 18 that received from the President of India, Sri Ramnath Kovind in 2021. Firstly, before I begin my talk, I would like to express my heartiest gratifications to the team at TEDx Lake Manalapan for making you know, this event happen amid this COVID crisis, especially with the second surge at an all time high. Now, before I begin the talk, it's all about why and how Gen Z people, that is the present generation, should be contributing to the popularization and the revitalization of their ancient culture and heritage. I begin with a quote, uh, which is, you know, I saw people climbing up to the roof of the main temple to take photographs, essentially risking both their lives and damaging the already crumbling monuments. The whole complex is surrounded by a moat and walls, which make it probable that it was established as a fort. However, unless properly preserved, these remnants would be gone soon. Our temples are part of our ancient heritage and both people and the government have responsibility towards preserving this uh, gem in the middle of lush green rolling mountains. The site should be protected and an archeological research project as well as tourism promotion undertaken. So this is what, you know, a travel writer, Omar Mukhtar Khan paints down in his column for the news on Sunday Pakistan with regard to the half desecrated temple sites of the Am Sharif. How grievous is it to see your ancient remains fade? How grievous is it, you know, to see your glorious past gradually disappear like anything? India has always been, ever since the dawn of mankind, a civilization that stood for cultural advancement and worldly philosophical views that even surpassed those of Alexander and his men, as is evident from the conversations of this great Macedonian with an Indian sage called Calenus, recorded in Anabasis by Arian, when the former invaded the northwestern boundaries of this ancient subcontinent. Moving on to talk specifically about the Indian culture, it is something that hasn't been, you know, barred by drawn boundaries. The medieval Mughal Indian culture is widely extant in the spectacular designs of the Lahore fort in Pakistan. From the picture wall built by Emperor Jahangir to the Nolakha pavilion by Emperor Shah Jahan, the fort in the center of Lahore's walled city smells Indian. Today, however, although the Nolakha pavilion still exists, half of the splendacious hand-drawn images of the one-of-a-kind picture world have gone missing. Once considered to be the greatest and the most magnificent mural of its kind in the world, the picture wall commissioned by Emperor Jahangir in 1624 and completed by his son Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in 32, extends over 1450 feet by 50 feet with almost 116 paintings that used to detailers on various tales and narratives associated with the Mughal Empire. The world doesn't falter, you know, to highlight the life and customs followed by the court sovereign, his nobles and his cortesans. One panel that highlights four men at a game of Choghan, which is now referred to as Polo, is considered a masterpiece in itself. There are also panels, as aforementioned, that depict elephant fights and taming wild beasts, which were usually part of the hugely popular recreations for the daredevil Mughal royals. In Civilizations, The Triumph of Art, a show for the BBC, historian Simon Scammer quotes, I quote, there are angels from Europe, Chinese dragons even make an appearance. There are royal hunts and epic battles. 
history, mythology, birds and beasts, the whole world as Jahangir understood it is on display. I unquote. However, you know, centuries of neglect towards this marvelous wall of pictures rendered it dilapidated. Its paintings having been destroyed as a result of wars and skirmishes and scuffles and combats until the present day Aga Khan Trust for Culture through a detailed investigation revealed the bewitching wall mural that once was. When I once told this to a fellow culture columnist uh, regarding you know, the excellent detailing that the picture wall once uh, possessed and why it should be restored at any cost, he simply negated my request saying, it is now a property of Pakistan and it is theirs to worry about. Well, if I ask you really, architecture and heritage like poem and music knows no boundaries and never belongs to a specific community or class or nation of people if you take it that way. History is our past. And as a generation that lies stable on the foundations of the past, we should not in any way divide and desecrate the past. At the end of the day, the most important thing to realize is at that point of time in history, when the monument had been built, it was neither the India nor the Pakistan of today. It was a United subcontinent and our roots say that we still are, at least if not in terms of citizenship or linguistic basis, we still shared the similar culture and architectural and literary similarities. We do have certain similarities. Even our topography says are quite the same, except for the fact that one's often, you know, we are often at diplomatic aggressions with one another. Even a little bit of uh, diplomatic aggression is, you know, still okay if you have had some issues, tensions or have it rooted in the past, but the places of historical importances are as much Indian as they are Pakistani. So why not learn to preserve those first? Why harm all those monuments that have stood there up on the peaks of those mountains for thousands and hundreds of years? This is, you know, quite ridiculous. Talking about the early medieval times, there were invaders like the powerful Bhaktir Kilji, who had completely ransacked and destroyed the famed Nalanda University in Bihar for the scriptures being unholy to their fate. But there were scriptures and scriptures that dealt with practical knowledge and not any kind of a superficial idea. Power comes to you with a responsibility. Authority doesn't mean destruction. It is given to you to construct a world where future generations might laud you for the efforts you had undertaken to preserve the heritage of the past. So if you ask me, I would say, be like Akbar and not Bhaktiya Kilji. I wouldn't delve into controversial statements about Akbar, but the only reason I asked you to be like him is when you are with influence, you should be the one who revives the past of the land that you rule in so that it gets preserved. Akbar set up the translation department of Maktab Khana, which had in itself furthered the Indian apics, the Vedic texts and learnings amongst the Islamic nobles and rulers then, enabling to create a bonding wherein you get to utilize the good elements of every literary text, political work you read, hence forming in the Indian terms, if we call it what is today, you know, running in India, we call it the Ek Bharat Shrest Bharat. So today, as the generation that lives in the present, we must take efficient measures to protect, preserve, and popularize our heritage and culture. Because if we do not do so, no one knows how the future shall repent for having lost all traces of their past. Talking about how you can you know, be a, a, a great revivalist, so it is anything at the term covers under its umbrella everything and anything, including a research scholar who's working on any particular timeline of the ancient medieval and modern history, an author who might be writing in nonfiction, fiction, you have lots of broad genres, an archeologist, a museum curator, a director, an orientalist, 
an academician who is into popularizing ancient studies or classics, a film director, a screenwriter even, whose scripts are normally based on unheard facts of history, even if that be with certain creative additions, because creative independence is what humans like to take at, at all times. A mythologist, a podcaster, or a columnist as I am, and anyone else who's reinvigorating tradition and culture in whatever ways that be, through dances, through poetry, and so on. Basically, it is up to you how you want to, you know, preserve your culture, because history is important. As James W. Lowen once quoted, more than any other topic, it is about us. Whether one deems our present society wondrous or awful or both, history reveals how we got to this point. So let us preserve history, pride on it, and popularize it through mediums of visualization, books and audios, and whatever way, as I said, you might ID it. Because when you lose your past, you lose your identity. Protect it and nourish it before it is too late. For as Marcus Garvey states, a person without knowledge of their past history, origin and culture is like a tree without roots. And as we know, a tree without roots is not a tree at all. Thank you.